I think it's possible to reach a point in your life where when you've accomplished a fair bit, um, you're very hesitant to change anything because you're worried that if you change any bit of the formula, you're going to lose whatever thing mm -hmm. gave you the ability to succeed. Um, for a TV allegory, actually, House fits really well here. Uh, have you ever seen the show? I don't watch a lot of TV. There's a lot of arcs in the show. He's basically he's like an edgy doctor, and he's addicted to Vicodin. And a few times he wants to quit does Vicodin. He, does he have a cane? Yeah, he's worried about quitting okay, because he's like, well, if I quit, if I lose my drug addiction, then I'm going to lose my my ability to perform well because like this even though it makes me miserable and i hate life and everything like it gives me the edge i need to be like one of the best doctors in the world basically it's similar to that kind of idea uh -huh. um i'm obviously i'm very sympathetic towards it i think i had that mindset a lot in my earlier life but it feels like at some point hopefully um ideally what you can do is you can the, the oh god um have you ever heard there's a jordan have you ever heard of the term um integrate your shadow uh no i have not so I think that like sometimes really bad experiences can break people. Other times really bad experiences for whatever reason can cause people to um, like excel. It's really hard to say why it happens sometimes and why it doesn't. Um, and I think for sometimes for the people that the bad experiences helps them to excel in life, it becomes very easy to use those bad experiences to like permanently anchor your life within the context of those bad experiences and to let them be like a defining aspect of your success. Yeah. But I, think I remember it, there was this thing I read in my in, in a class about the build one's ability to build their own narrative is extremely important in how you interact with the world. Yeah, the story that you're writing mm -hmm. um, impacts how you act. So it's not only just like you acting you, but how you're perceiving how you, how you're acting impacts how you're acting. Yeah, uh, as in like if my narrative is like basically all 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 this stuff happened and I need to just like fix all of this because it's it's and it just needs to put my whole life and dedicated to it that, that that's like how i'm gonna act like mm -hmm. if I, I view it as like some fucking unending quest right yeah it's one of the reasons why i'm hesitant whenever someone's like oh like well why do you think you're like this and it's like well i don't know i mean i can give you a story for why i think i am but that might be influenced by you know who i am at the times so i don't actually know that's true building. yeah exactly yeah um i think at some point in a person's life i think there's a lot of value in being able to take like a negative drive that you've used and and like honed in and in, in giving you like a positive end um, to be able to assimilate the positivity from that drive but separate the negativity from it as well um, so like for me like growing up um, when I say growing up I'll say like from 20 to 25 I think one of my biggest strengths online was that I was an incredibly edgy um, very pointed very aggressive type of person and to some extent I kind of worry that like you know the changing landscape of the internet might change that like yeah you know I could be like pretty aggressive I could be a dick to a lot of people blah 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 but you know I think that's just part of who I am and I need that or whatever um, but I think it's possible as I've mellowed out over the years that I can take something positive from those experiences and I can hold on to the positives of those experiences and utilize them in the future without mm -hmm. constantly having to be the most negative aggressive like assholeish person possible does that make sense like Find, find ways to like assimilate into yourself like the, the, the uh, positive aspects of a negative experience you've had without letting those negative experiences define Not you for the rest ideas. of your existence. So like control it, like hold it by a leash. Almost. Yeah, but at, in order to do that though, at some point, you're gonna have to sit down and obviously this, the discomfort varies from person to person, but at some point you're gonna have to sit down with these experiences and like really truly process them. Like understand that like I experienced this thing, it's not fair, it's not good, like sucks there's a lot of trauma involved um but like i think you need to like really sit with that and process it i say you generally i don't know if you need to i, I can't know that right but it feels like that might do some good yeah you're not a psychologist yeah or uh, well, not even i'm not even sad I, I, don't, I don't care about the legal disclaimer i'm just saying personally to you like i don't know you well enough i could be like super off in everything i'm saying just because i don't i'm not like that person with yeah. but i'm just saying that in terms of like what you've told me like I think there's a lot of value in that um, because a lot of people define their drives by their negative experiences, but that always comes back to bite you in the ass. Like not many people make it to like 70 and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I was just I filled, filled with hatred my whole life and that just drove me until the very end. Like, you know, these people either become incredibly self-destructive and they kill themselves in their early mid twenties or, or, or late twenties or, um, or eventually they, they find a way to like, kind of like integrate those experiences in a more positive way, I think. In my opinion, I think it's good to do it. I, that's a very easy piece of advice to get, but it's an incredibly yeah. difficult thing to do. But because, like, yeah, one of the things I'm dealing, like, how do you like the positive, and separate the positive and negative from your experience with rape and heroin abuse and homelessness and everything? I like, guess it's, it's very. It's like, how do you do that? It's like there's it's a lot like, of. Apparently, like, I, I, you sound like you consider yourself a smart person. Um, 
I consider myself to be a really smart person. Um, I think that there are positives to that, and I think that there are negatives to that as well. Um, I consider myself to be a pretty smart person, and I think I have really good emotional regulation, and as a result of that, I can lie to myself really well about things that may or may not help me um, in the future. So um, something that's really bad is that for intelligent people, or if you are an intelligent person, it's very easy to rationalize away shit and be very emotionally unintelligent as a result of your intelligence. So to, to be more applicable here, it sounds really stupid, and it sounds really juvenile, but sometimes like talking to other people that have had similar experiences to you can be like a very liberating thing. Um, I don't know if you do this, but something that I've done a lot in my life is I usually think like, if I have a negative feeling, I usually think like, this is a stupid feeling, I need to get over it. Um, but that process, like just doing that to yourself can actually be somewhat dehumanizing. And even doing something as dumb as like, or seemingly dumb as like group therapy and hearing other people talk about their experiences can be like a really validating thing for something that you yourself experienced. Um, you don't necessarily feel as alone in the world or you understand that other people have gotten fucked in a way similar to you. Um, and it's not fair, but just hearing other people air their experiences can be really liberating for yourself. Just as like a thing, if you ever decide to go after like therapy or group therapy or something like that. Jade, did you fall overboard? I'm sorry. Why wouldn't I... you say something? You're gonna die. No, no, no you're you're talking. <sighs> did you have it's your okay. inventory full of ore? Yeah. It's okay. Jade, life philosophy can wait. Okay, you just died with. Oh God, how much ore did you have on you? Oh no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, wait. The tombstone floats. Okay, sorry. Okay, go ahead, Dylan. What were you saying? <laughs> right, I just finished the thing. Dude, group therapy. Right here. Fuck. Group therapy this is, um, is almost as traumatic as everything I've gone through. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb things. Okay, I'm sorry. When I say there's a lot of dumb things, what I mean is they seem like they're dumb, but they're not. Um, they're actually incredibly emotional, intelligent things related to therapy and therapeutic techniques um, that if you're intelligent, it's very easy. I did this a lot in my early 20s. I looked down on a lot of people. Um, and I, I saw myself as being better than a lot of people. And I think one of the biggest changes that I've made as a human over my, my 20s is coming to not see myself as better than people, but seeing myself as different than people, right? Like, sure, I might be more intelligent in this way, but emotionally, I might be lacking this. Or artistically, I might be lacking this. Or this person, I think, like, you know, I might be way better than this, but they have a totally different perspective on this thing. And there's, like, I can probably learn something from every person I interact with. You know, they're, they're going to have at least one thing that they know way more about than I do. Um, I, I don't know if you personally suffer from that, but having, like, a way more humble view of your own, like, emotional well-being, I, I think, is goes a really far way in alleviating, like, prior trauma or past issues that are really difficult to confront. But all of this has to be like a really deliberate process and it can be a really difficult thing to deal with. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I acknowledge I need to do a lot of things, right? Like I acknowledge, for example, I know that I need to rest more. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a very, that's a thing I need to do. But then when I, for my priority list will always like weigh, like I'll look at like, okay, what can I strike from my list of like things? And I look at this like list of responsibilities I have, and I can't find anything. Like obviously I'm not gonna get rid of college, I need to graduate. I can't get rid of streaming because I need that to house myself, and I don't want to get rid of the consultant job because that helps just top out my income, and without that I wouldn't be able to house myself either. And the financial director job, I mean, that's that'll be great for, I mean, this is against a candidate who literally called my county the N-word county. This, this, is, this is great for experience, it's, it's for a just cause, and, and, and so what I'll slowly do is rationalize myself and I can't I can't take anything off of the table I got to keep doing all this stuff and it'll just keep it to always be down the road and so it, it's just uh, it's just a can to keep kicking up I think that at um hmm it's really difficult um, and I swore to God that I would never say this to anybody because it, I because when I hear it I it just I just want to kill a person because it's such a worthless piece of advice it feels like some things you are granted by experience so I'll say something that may or may not mean anything, but um, I strongly feel that very few people would ever say that have experienced like pretty traumatic stuff, have, would ever say that like, God, when I was 22 and I took like that, like three months off or when I postponed that job or whatever to like get my mental health in check, I regret it so much. I should have just pushed through. Um, you know I think what? I think yeah. you're actually, you're hundred percent right. Like, yeah. Because what I'll think about, is I remember in high school, anytime I'd get like a B, I'd feel like, I, I'd do this thing where I'd be like, you have failed your mother. Like that's how I would like, every, I would catastrophize every slight failure into a major 
thing, mm -hmm. and I can't even remember any of those tests. Yeah, I can't exactly. Remember yeah. Any of those quizzes, and so I don't think it would be any different. And for example, I'd like I, I considered taking off. And you know what? I think I might do it now, actually. I think I probably should. I was thinking about taking off the next semester because it's just, just, honestly, it just, it's just so much. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the tough, I, I like streaming. This is something I, this, this is the new thing too, I've actually found. Mm -hmm. I don't like any of my work. Yeah. I don't do, I, I, the idea of working for enjoyment is like a foreign thing to me. Mm-hmm. I work because I, I, I want to gain something. I think there's two types of people. I think there's... Um, Jade, well, no, come to me on the map, Jade. Come to me on the I map. Think there's, I think there's people who work for, like, for like those break periods, you know, those, like, nine-to-fivers who just, like, man, I can't wait to get off for the weekend. Mm -hmm. I think there's people who work who genuinely enjoy their work, and I think there's people who work to achieve something. Sure. That boxers, they, they might like boxing, but when they're not... And, I, and I'm saying this as somebody who loved boxing in high school. Um, and that was a therapeutic experience. Um, no. Getting beat up, getting just destroyed by people double your size isn't a fun experience, but you're doing it because you want to achieve like a medal or a goal. And there's that thing you're going for. And I feel like that's what I'm doing, that I don't enjoy anything I'm doing uh -huh. whatsoever. I don't enjoy political campaigning. I don't enjoy this. I feel it as, as kind of like a civic duty. Uh -huh. But streaming is something I actually enjoy, and that's something that's like messing with like my, my how I view work. Sure. You know, it, it's something that I actually enjoy doing. I enjoy making content. It's busy. It's it's stressful, of course, but so are all jobs people enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it's it's messing with what like, I'm trying to balance these two things, but I don't I don't know if I can. So I, yeah. I mean, I think taking some time off can probably be good. I think that um. I think the semester off would not be terrible for me. My, my partner actually did that, and they're not dead. Mm -hmm. I think that it's easy to carry a lot of, um, it's easy to carry a lot of emotional and psychological trauma and to continue to do that to you because we don't really have a good way of measuring it. And because we don't have a good way of measuring it, it's easy to take it for granted. So like if you could endure some level of psychological or emotional harm in order to make more money or get more viewers on stream or to get further in school, like, all of those things are easy to measure. So it's easy for us to say like, oh, it's worth it. Because like, well, like what do I get for being like happy or emotionally well? Like there's not, there's not like a clear metric for that. So there's not really anything that, uh, that somebody can grade themselves on. So it's easy to carry a lot of that trauma and to further that uh, because there's no way to mark it. But it's like, it's one of the, as soon as it goes, every other area in your life suffers and you won't, unfortunately, because of how we're put together, we don't notice it. Um, everything else will just start to get completely fucked. Also, um, and then the final thing I'll say too about this is that like um, for emotional or psychological trauma, um, it, taking time off does nothing. You have to take time off and put deliberate effort into fixing this stuff. None of this stuff gets better on its own. Um, it has to be purposeful, deliberate, like these are the problems that I have and I'm going to take these steps to fix them. Like it has to be something, a process that you engage in. You should consider though. It's healthy to have a healthy mind and it helps you do everything else in your life will be so much better and will feel so much better too and then the best thing too is that like um one thing that sucks as well is when we're considering about like sacrificing time and everything too we tend to evaluate like future sacrifices or future mental states when we're in really good states of mind but if you try to think of how you handle those things in the worst states of mind or in really bad states of mind that can give you a different answer too for like how you should be acting so for instance like maybe right now you feel like well maybe i can trudge forward and it'll be okay and i'll do school and work and blah 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 blah. but like when you're in like the worst like the darkest places in your mind and then you get like an adverse effect that comes up like you're really super fucked like and then now you're like suicidal or something or or you or yeah it gets really bad people take their I mental health for granted so much Sorry, okay. I think a big th a big thing for me there was two big developments, uh, and I think like me uh, one thing was acknowledging the fact that I was uh, raped. That was like a big thing for me because mm -hmm. this it's weird to, and this is something that uh, I I don't think people give a, a no attention to. Guys getting raped does not get attention, does not get interest, does not get like all the uh, like any like care or whatever mm -hmm. people like like to pretend it does but it's 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 the butt of the joke which okay offensive comedy whatever but like i if, when people say for example like like prison rape 
and they're talking about oh that being part of the like the punishment that that's always directed towards men a hundred percent like men are the ones who like receive that in, in prison scenarios or uh, when we talk about like representation i can't think of male rape victims the only person i know of is terry cruz yeah right and, even and he's he not gets a, a little victim. bit of shit he, he got yeah. sex and he did get shit for it mm -hmm. and it, it's it, it's an emasculating experience you get basically no resources for it there's no centers to go to it's just a thing you kind of deal with and i viewed rape as a thing that doesn't happen to men mm -hmm. and so i never viewed i just viewed it as a thing that happened to me one time just as a weird sexual thing that for whatever reason someone in their 30s Doing Ooh. what they did to me when I was five was just a hold on weird one second. Sexual. Nobody takes uh, male sexual assault seriously. It's not a thing that happens to men. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a thing that happens to men. So it was like in this moment where I realized when talking to my talking to my partner, like, oh yeah, that was rape. Like, like almost sixteen years later, I I stumble upon the idea that I was raped. Not like this was an active thing that I knew afterwards it happened to me. Or figured out when I like figured out what rape was. Mm -hmm. It was just I, I just like oh I was raped, which is really weird. And so that was like a moment where I slowly developed and acknowledged what occurred to me, and then started to like I think acknowledging that was like a huge point for me, for me like accepting being more accepting of that trauma. And I think the second thing was me being more accepting of uh, my like my sexuality. I my, my my father had, for whatever reason, I always looked up to my father growing up. Um, he like I thought he was like the coolest person ever. He just watched like you know as a kid, he like, watched horror movies all the time. He has these cool leather jackets. He had a cool car. He uh, was a Monte Carlo. He. He was just like the coolest guy in the world. He could play pool. He had tattoos. He's just the coolest thing in the world. And I looked up to him so much, even though I had probably much better male figures in my life. And he said to me, and it stuck with me, said, thank God my only son ain't gay. And that, like, stuck with me. Like the idea that if I if I if I liked guys, that'd be a huge disappointment, a huge failure. Mm -hmm. And I know when he found out. That if I was there, there was a good chance he would have been violent with me. Because I know he, because I was told that when he found out, he, like, clenched his fists and, like. But eventually, he was like, yeah, I don't really care who you bring home, but, you know, the damage was already done. Mm -hmm. Like, the idea of me, like, me talking about, like, having the sex with, like a, like, a woman is, like, so easy for me to do. Me, like, even beginning to, like, delve into, like. So when I was young, I had a crush on this. Like it, it's it's like I turned into like an insecure ball, and it's it's so weird because I I, I I it's it's so I don't know how to really describe it. But the thing that I've found out is it's not like oh a lot of people think being bisexual is like you're fifty this, you're fifty that, right? Yeah. It's it's what the fuck is that? That thing looks wild. That thing's look wicked on the screen. What is that? I don't know. Sorry, but keep going. No, this is a cool monster. Anyway, um, ah, so cool. I'm like, I figure I'm like, fuck, I'm like 90% just gay. Mm -hmm. And that's like a weird thing to like wrap my head around. Like that's a thing like that was like a big part of me. And I was only like experiencing 10% like, of like who I was actually. And that's just um weird because it's like in the weirdest ways you like you, you like realize like how how you were i remember when i was a when i was a kid uh you're familiar with dragon ball z right yes yeah do you know um ginyu what the ginyu force the ginyu was force, yeah the loser guys uh the purple dude was the leader or whatever yeah you remember the red dude Raka? or what was his name no he's the red dude he jace? was australian yeah jace yeah. yeah so i didn't know it but in my head i was like Man, you'd be really cool if Jace, like, like he got hurt, like, bad, but not too bad. And then, like, the good guy, like, took him and, like, brought him home and, like, you know, fed him, like, soup. Like, wrapped him up in, like, a blanket and, like, developed, like, a deep, like, emotional bond. And, like, what I, I was literally, it was, like, it was, like, 
I was just being like, it's it's a hundred percent. It's like everything gay, but except for like sexual, like actually, it was like a hundred percent just homosexual. Mm -hmm. Like it was like deep emotional homosexuality, which I think is like a little bit different than like like homo romanticism, not just like extreme yeah. homo romanticism. Mm -hmm. I and this is another thing. It is so difficult for me to view women in a romantic manner. There's very few that I could possibly do that with. Mm -hmm. Men, it's like that. Sure. And so there's a million stories from my youth that I can remember, like imagine, like where I, I viewed men in that way and, and never women, where where it was abusive because it, it made me have this idea where it was like, oh, like sex is just the thing; it's a sexual object. That's that's how you interact with people, and that's how what because it's just suppressed. And that's something that I'm trying to like work more on, be mm -hmm. more open with. That like that's a huge part of who I am. Wait, is your current partner a girl or a guy? Uh, they're uh, they go by they them. They go by they them. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think uh, you may have seen them on stream before. Yeah, with the huge black hair, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I know what you were looking for. Wait, um, what was I looking for? Wait, what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway. Or I was curious because I because I've seen them before and I they they look to me like a girl like the expression is a woman or so I didn't know yeah yeah, yeah. They, 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 they they present feminine yeah yeah, yeah. so I didn't know if that was like or how that yeah, worked I that's what I meant I, that's what you were looking for yeah. yeah it wasn't a racism don't worry wait no this isn't racism <laughs> I didn't wasn't thinking about the race I was thinking about their presentation gender wise yeah. a presentation like yeah. skin color or like what do you mean well, no not that. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, like, that's, a. Uh... and I mean, I guess that's also interesting, like, the one, the one person, like, I, I like, the one person I did develop romantic feelings with, mm -hmm. ends up being trans, mm -hmm. right? Is it, like, out of everyone, it, it's, I guess, I, I guess it shows us, like, I was a lot more, I was a lot more queer than I thought I was. Yeah, I think, um, when it, I think that meeting people really changes your view of what you think you could tolerate. Because I've had multiple experiences in my life where I had an assumption about a group of people, and even, and again, I consider myself to be <laughs> too smart for dumb stuff like that. But then, like, once I meet, like, certain types of people, I'm like, holy shit, like, wow, I can't, I don't know why I had this, like, assumption in my head before. Like, this was so stupid. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it was an inch. Yeah. I, I just. It, it was weird because I, I just, I, and the thing is, it, it, I was very, I was extremely sexually active throughout, like, like, like high school and like, like, I, I, I and obviously because of like the rape, I was, I, I became very sexually active at a younger age because that's, obviously that type of stuff can like have effects on, on like a develop, like somebody having a regular developmental, like sexual mm -hmm. like, stuff. And that like kickstarted it obviously by what happened with that and the later the sexual assault and everything else. Um, and I guess a lot of it was like, I didn't really, there was a, I did have a few experiences with men, but it was just like, and I wasn't gay. I just wanted to interact with that man sexually and do that thing with that man sexually and just give and not receive in any manner. And somehow that, like, it's, you know, it made the logic around it. But then I, I mostly have sex with women and I just, I was, I was almost like, I guess you could almost describe it as like a sex addict because I, I felt like I had to like constantly like get a fill if mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because it was like i was overcompensating because i wasn't also like addressing the areas that like i think i mostly identify with you know what i mean mm -hmm. it also puts me in a weird position like how do i identify myself right like do i just call myself gay because a lot of people like online actually just think i'm gay right mm -hmm. because of how like i've been talking about myself recently a lot of people just think 100 percent gay must be with a guy like some, something something along those lines because of just how I, how I talk about it, which I mean, it's easy to believe, and it's 100% understandable. And I and it's like, like at one point, is it just like if when you're 95% towards men and 5% towards women, at one point do you say, okay, I'm gay? At one point do you say like, I'm bisexual? You know what I mean? Because the, the idea is if it's fluid, mm -hmm. then like everyone's bisexual, but that doesn't that but for practicality sake, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. What's his name? I don't know what his name is. He's a, he's a, he came from you. Wait, who? Uh, the market guy. Who the fuck asked me? I'm so sorry. I'm just kidding. I